Hey, welcome back. I'm here with my friend Max Lugavier, uh, author of Genius Foods, good friend of mine.、Um, so, Max, we just did a podcast, and you said something that was really fascinating. So, I have a question for you. Yeah. Why are babies fat? <laughs> so, when you look at a, a newborn human baby, you one thing off the bat becomes very apparent that they're very fat, right? And they're cute, they're cuddly, but mostly what you're inundated with is just you're, you're seeing this basically stay puffed marshmallow man in miniature human form. And really, it became very interesting to me when I when I learned one of the leading theories as to why babies are born so fat. So, you know, we talk a lot today about、um, brain energy, and、uh, fat is a very clean burning fuel source for the brain. A human baby, when a human baby is born, the brain is underdeveloped. So human baby brains continue their development out in the world around other people, and that's one of the reasons why human beings are so smart. They're so social because we literally continue our development in you know in the in the in the same environment with other people, and this is often referred to as the baby's fourth trimester. If you were to look at a newborn chimp, a newborn chimp is born ripped. I mean, they've got six-pack abs and everything, but also the the chimp's brain comes packed with a catalog of pre-installed instincts. And behaviors and abilities that you know a human newborn baby simply doesn't have. A newborn, a, a newborn human baby is helpless. It's almost like a more like a clean slate, almost. Almost like a clean slate, a completely clean slate. And to that, I think we owe much of what we've been able to accomplish as a species. So, what is the the purpose of the fat on a on a newborn baby? Which actually, a newborn baby's body fat percentage is higher than any other mammal. I mean, it, it rivals that of newborn baby seals,、oh, wow. essentially. Yeah. So why is that? So it, it it basically is theorized that the fat serves as a battery source of energy for the developing newborn brain. As I mentioned, the brain continues to develop outside of the womb. What percentage of energy is that is a baby's brain using? I know in humans it's twenty for five percent or something like that. Yeah, twenty percent. Right. So the adult human brain、um, is using about twenty five percent of your of your basal metabolic rate. So twenty five percent of every breath you take, every fourth breath, and a quarter of all the calories you consume is going to fuel your brain. In a newborn human, that、uh, that brain is eating up ninety percent. Oh wow! Of the baby's metabolic、uh, of the baby's metabolic rate. So it's an incredibly hungry organ, particularly at birth, and so it needs that additional energy. And so the fat on a newborn is literally to supply backup calories in the form of fat because it's no longer connected to the mother, right? So that the brain can continue to develop throughout its fourth trimester. And also, I mean, if you think about the fact that human breast milk is very high in saturated fat, and particularly a kind of fat called a medium chain triglyceride, it becomes very clear that nature really intended ketones to be the brain's ultimate fuel source. And、uh, now ketones are what your what your body takes fat and turns into as an energy source. So ketones come from fat, whereas glucose comes from carbohydrates. Yeah, exactly. So we have a, a small capacity of glucose storage. Our livers sort of serve as a backup battery、um, for our brains when we run out of glucose. The liver can store about 100 grams of of, of glucose,、uh, but we have a virtually unlimited ability to store fat,、um, which the brain will happily、um, use for fuel. Although the brain can't directly use fat, they have to be converted, as you mentioned, to ketones first.、Um, Now, in terms of energy sources,、yeah. glucose versus ketones,、uh, what's the difference in, in, in terms of waste product? Because I know, I know, I know, ketones have been called clean energy. Glucose has been called more of that dirty energy. Is there truth to that? Yeah. So, I mean, I liken the brain to the universe's most advanced hybrid.、Um, when you think about a hybrid car, a hybrid car has the ability to use gluc-、uh, gasoline for fuel. Um, and it also has the ability to use electricity. And like gasoline, glucose is sort of a dirty, burning fuel. It creates a lot of reactive oxygen species in its metabolism to ATP. Ketones, on the other hand, are considered a clean, burning fuel source because it creates more ATP in fewer metabolic steps, and it also uses less oxygen. So when we think about the delicate balance between、um, antioxidant status in the body and oxidative stress, it's a delicate balance that every living creature has to contend with, right? But、um, ketones, by creating more energy by using less oxygen in the human brain, which is a crucible for、mm. oxidative stress, because I mean, for one, 25% of every breath <coughs> you take is basically used to be to create ATP in a container the size of a grapefruit.、Mm-hmm. Um, it becomes really important for the delicate, damage-prone human brain to be efficient when it comes to creating energy, and so that's why I think that、uh, ketones provide.、Um, A really、uh, powerful potential fuel for the brain, 
particularly today when we're seeing so many people struggle with Alzheimer's disease, which is actually characterized by an inability of the brain to use um, glucose for fuel. Interesting. So ketones provide a very, uh, not only a clean burning fuel source, but they, they're able to circumvent a lot of the metabolic issues that um, seem to be uh, provoked by the modern world. And then also a last really important point about ketones is that ketones are not just a fuel. They can actually act like a signaling mechanism in the brain where they flip switches that seem to act in a really positive manner. In one regard, these switches turn on the uh, generation of our own endogenous antioxidants, one of which is called glutathione. And ketones have also been shown to um, upregulate the production of BDNF, which is sort of oh, considered, wow. yeah. Brain-derived neurotropic factor. Yeah, there you go. It's uh, been referred to as the brain's miracle grow protein, which helps to ensure the survival of, of your existing neurons and promote the growth of new, of new brain cells as well. And this is, so one of the most common comments I get on people, from people who try a ketogenic diet or who fast regularly, because when you fast, your body does go into ketosis. You're not eating any food. You quickly run out of glycogen. Now your body's tapping into fat stores. You're running off of ketones. And of course, a ketogenic diet, a very high fat, uh, very low carbohydrate, moderate protein diet, uh, where your body's producing lots of ketones because you have no carbohydrates. Yeah. One of the number one th comments that people will say is that they feel sharper, that their minds feel sharper, especially after they make that conversion, a switch from glycogen to, uh, to, to ketones. I'm one of those people. Yeah. Now, does that highlight the fact that ketones work better or does it highlight the fact that I might have a little bit of issues utilizing glucose or maybe both? Uh, it's, it's unclear um, whether or not in young people, uh, the glucose hypometabolism that has been demonstrated to occur in young brains with the Alzheimer's risk gene has any impact on uh, cognitive function. In fact, people with the Alzheimer's risk gene very early in life seem to display increased uh, cognitive prowess, which is interesting. very interesting. Yeah, it's, it's very, so it's very, it's obviously very complicated, um, but it is possible. And I wonder know, if it's because their brains are just burning too hot and that causes lots of oxidation and maybe contributes to dementia. Or yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a good theory. I just made that up, by the way. Ultimately, <laughs> ultimately everybody, so anybody can develop Alzheimer's disease and whether or not you carry this gene, the same reduced ability of the brain to create um, energy out of glucose is evident. Mm. So it, it to me, um, hints that, that glucose hypometabolism in the brain, an inability of the brain to effectively create ATP out of glucose, is a potential causative factor in the disease. Nobody, nobody knows why Alzheimer's disease develops. Mm. Um, for a while it was believed that amyloid plaque was the causative factor, and now we know, thanks to really amazing technology, FTG PET technology, we can see um, features that are associated with, al with Alzheimer's disease um, way earlier than symptoms. This is really important mm -hmm. because it's become clear that prevention, preventing a disease like this that begins in the brain so much earlier than the, than the, um, than the presentation of symptoms uh, has, become mm -hmm. so, has become so key. Interesting. So, yeah, one of the things that I recommend to people, because if you look at it in the context of human evolution, it's quite clear, and this is a, this is an accepted theory that humans went through periods of being in ketosis and through periods of having you know glucose as primary sources of fuel. Obviously, humans weren't you know they weren't going on diets; they yeah. just ate what was around them. And so sometimes you had no carbohydrates, and your body went into ketosis. Sometimes you fasted because you had no food, and humans can survive for a long period yeah. of time without food. And sometimes you found fruit, or if you were brave enough, you could get through some bees and eat some honey, and you'd have glucose or glycogen. So I always recommend to people to, to get into ketosis, let your body get into ketosis and sometimes come out of it. But most modern humans, especially modern Western societies, never go into ketosis or at least rarely go into ketosis. Maybe if they sleep, you know, late in the, you know, uh, on a weekend or something like that, they might do it. But other than that, for the most part, we're never in ketosis and we're constantly burning, you know, glycogen. And, and I, I firmly believe that that may be contributing to some of our degenerative disorders. Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't make, it wouldn't make sense if you got dumber and less alert the minute food wasn't around. You had to get smarter, more clever Good and point. more alert because you had to find your next meal. And this makes total sense from an evolutionary standpoint. And it's actually been shown in studies that people, when they're fasted, um, there was really, there was a really good study that was published, uh, and the, the title of it was Always Gamble While Hungry. It found that people tend to make more advantageous decisions, like gut decisions, um, when in a fasting wow, state. Wow, that's fascinating. Yeah, and you know, a lot of people these days were like, oh, but the brain needs glucose, and so they tend to feel lethargic and less focused when they start, when they begin to adopt a low-carb diet for the first time. 
But the key to remember is that that's not because the brain needs glucose. It's because you're going through glucose withdrawal. Yeah. So people often will then reach for high carb foods to then treat their withdrawal. And it's they, like the hair of the dog with alcohol. Like, oh, alcohol makes me feel better. Keep drinking. Exactly. Yeah. And so they get tricked into thinking that those foods are their friends. But those foods are actually what's driving inflammation and oftentimes contributing to insulin resistance, which are what, you know, this, those exact things are what um, it really seems to drive brain disease and brain fog and, and depression, as we talked about earlier as well. Wow. Extremely fascinating. So listen, next time you look at a baby and you're like, oh, you're so cute and chubby. Now you know why. Babies are fat. Share this with your friends that have fat babies. Also <laughs> share this with people who you think might be interested in this information. Look, if you have questions, put them in the comments below. We like to go on there and sometimes answer some of these questions. Also subscribe to this channel. Uh, we post new videos all the time. And finally, uh, we're putting a link in the bottom of this where you can actually purchase uh, Max's new book, Genius Foods. I highly recommend it.